I'm gonna go across that river and make it to the city on the other side. I'm gonna be a singer. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest Stewie Griffin cutaways. This sucks, I hate it here. Shut up, drink wolf milk and watch Russian cartoons. For this list, we'll be looking at the most memorable and hilarious flashbacks featuring the pint-sized evil genius. Let us know in the comments which Stewie Griffin cutaway is your all-time favorite. Number 10, Discreet Crepe. Hi, are you a straight adult male who likes to eat crepes without people making unwanted assumptions about your private life? We, for one, love crepes, but we'd be lying if we said Stewie's under-the-table business wasn't humorous. In this meta episode, we see the characters behind the scenes as actors on Family Guy. At one point, James Woods checks in on Stewie in his dressing room, revealing the youngster isn't a fan of his own show. You want to talk about the show? I'll talk about the show. The show sucks. Instead, he reveals it's just a means to an end to keep afloat his side hustle of providing insecure men delicious crepes. We don't know if the two things are related, like Stewie says, but we also wouldn't be ones to refuse a discreet crepe if it meant we didn't have to share it. Mmm, strawberry banana Nutella with raspberry drizzle. Number 9. Stewie Gets Trapped If you've ever been on a budget, you know sacrifices must be made. Oh my god, Peter, there are thousands of lottery tickets here. Where did you get the money for all these? Simple. I took out a second mortgage on a house. When the Griffins run into money trouble, the family dog Brian is alarmed before Lois reminds him of his delayed grooming appointment. Geez, are we really living that close to the edge? You know we are, Brian. Why do you think we waited so long to take you to the groomers last month? We're treated to a flashback depicting the disturbingly overgrown pooch walking into the kitchen. His ghastly appearance combined with Lois doing her best not to notice is tremendous. The comedic scene is enhanced after Stewie falls out of Brian's tangled mane, confused and delirious. <coughs> What day is this? Are we the only ones wondering how long Stewie was trapped in there? Number 8. Stewie Hates Colin God, you're more worthless than Colin Farrell. Eviscerating celebrities is an old pastime for Family Guy. In this case, Stewie remarks on the supposed worthlessness of well-known Irish actor Colin Farrell. The lengthy cutaway features Farrell hanging out on a street corner while Stewie tears him apart. The sardonic baby rants on everything from his wardrobe to his personality, all while Farrell calmly stands there and takes it. Oh, hey, nice t-shirt. Fresh. And, it, and it's spelled with a P-H. Oh, that's fun, because it's usually spelled with an F. Before long, Stewie decides he's had enough and handles business with a laser gun. My god, this is ridiculous. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to kill you. We're not sure if Farrell has some outstanding beef with the show's creator, Seth MacFarlane. Regardless, Stewie's cynical monologues are something that we will never tire of. Number 7. A Pleasant Surprise When Stewie finds out he suffers from scoliosis, he's forced to wear a back brace wherever he goes. This leads to him getting all sorts of positive attention, prompting this hilarious cutaway. Well, I say, that was a pleasant surprise. In this bit, Stewie looks to cross the street and is seemingly waved along by a driver and a Porsche Cayenne. Yet when he enters the street, the car immediately knocks him over. It's a funny and unexpected beat as it is, but the real kicker comes when the driver gives her explanation. I wasn't telling you to go. I was trying to smell my own fart. We all know how self-centered and rude drivers can be, and this exaggerates that notion to hilarious effect. I should try to win those Justin Bieber tickets just so I can, like, tear them up or use them to go to the concert. Number 6. Stewie the Choreographer Just when you think you've seen it all, Stewie continues to prove he's full of surprises. Remember, I'm the guy who came up with the choreography to Showgirls. After reminding Brian of his talent and ingenuity, we're treated to the proof of his words. During the cutaway, Stewie schools Elizabeth Berkeley in the fine art of pole dancing on the set of Showgirls. His erotic performance paired with his cocky attitude is bound to tickle the viewers with hilarity. You do 20% that, and we got a movie. Plus, seeing Stewie show off this side of him almost always results in a big laugh. We know where to go for dancing lessons from now on. Brian, which photo should I bring to my audition? Number 5. Stewie at the Club I know where I go when I want to relax. As the show progresses through its seasons, Stewie's sexuality proves to be more and more pronounced. 
As early as the third season, we learn about his interesting relaxation habits. As he recalls one of his favorite ways to wind down, we cut to a nightclub full of loud music and shirtless men, Stewie among them. The scene is made funnier by Stewie yelling about his relationship with the owner before jamming out to the electronic beats. I said I know the guy. That, oh, I'll tell you later. I love this song. Judging by some of Stewie's later fantasies, the only thing missing is a buff, humanoid version of his teddy bear, Rupert. But this cutaway makes us laugh all the same. I never knew there could be such a thing as a perfect day. Don't frolic too much, Rupert. Save some energy for the hula contest. Number four. Stewie knocks out Will Ferrell. This is amazing. You've got the biggest hut in the village and all these servants, and you've only spent $1.50. Well, that's a hell of a lot less than I had to spend to go see that piece of crap remake of Bewitched. Drawn-out punchlines are an infamous staple of Family Guy, and in season four, we're provided with one that's all too humorous. After getting irritated by Will Ferrell's performance in Bewitched, Stewie goes on quite the journey to seek revenge. Guess what? I'm a witch. Guess what? I'm a Clippers fan. His long trek from one coast to another is rather dull and mundane, lulling the viewer into a false sense of security. However, once he finally arrives in Los Angeles, it doesn't take him long to show up on Farrell's doorstep. The tag delivers a blow and a pent-up one-liner after much anticipation. Hello? That's not funny! Add Petty to Stewie's long list of personality traits. Number three, Stewie's drawing. You know, you should be more sensitive to my humiliation. You remember how bad you felt when you drew that picture for Peter and Lois? Looking back, we know our early artwork weren't masterpieces, but most of us at least had supportive authority figures to make them feel special. But Lois and Peter are hardly role models. In this cutaway, Brian reminds Stewie of the time he showed his parents his drawing. Oh, Stewie, it's wonderful. This is going right up on the fridge. Really? The fridge? They feign admiration for it while he's there, but as soon as he turns his back, they all but literally rip it to shreds. We don't get to see the drawing, but we find it hard to believe it was that bad to warrant this kind of response. What the hell is it supposed to be, a pelican or a school bus? <laughs> <laughs> Still, it's heartbreakingly hilarious to watch Stewie overhear what they plan to do to it. Number two. Stewie at Woodstock. The New Yorker. Oh, you'll fit in there as well as I did at Woodstock. There's an important rule to remember in show business. Know your audience. When Brian is offered a gig working for the New Yorker, Stewie scoffs at him. He tells Brian that he won't fit in, just like Stewie didn't at Woodstock. Cut to a hilarious image of Stewie as a hippie, complete with a soul patch and an acoustic guitar. Uh, excuse me, it's been brought to my attention that a few bad apples out there are smoking marijuana. He scolds the audience for smoking marijuana and the booze rain down. As if that wasn't bad enough, he goes on to perform a song praising the government. Establishment, establishment, you always know what's best. You suck! Learn the rules! Definitely not the best place to mix politics with pleasure, old Stu. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Stewie and Michael Jackson. Stewie's sarcasm brings humor to a dark moment. Stewie, did Mr. Jackson behave inappropriately toward you? Well, yes, but the worst part was he never called back. <laughs> Stewie all grown up. Stewie as an adult is a perfect way to guarantee nightmares. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up looking like an exact mashup of Lois and Peter. <laughs> groceries. Stewie's lackluster speech. Stewie really shouldn't be allowed to give motivational speeches. And, and, let's not forget the tax they levied on properties that are an abutment of church lands. So yeah, let's do it. The internet police. Be careful what you post on social media. Hey, what are you in for? I said Caitlyn Jenner wasn't brave and beautiful. Brian, there's some bad people in here. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Stewie auditions for American Idol. I'll be as big as I should have been when I was on American Idol. I don't mind not knowing what I'm headed for. As evil as Stewie can be, sometimes you just have to feel bad for the little guy. After the evil genius kidnaps Brian, he claims that he'll soon achieve greatness. 
just as he should have when he auditioned for American Idol. We cut to an atrociously tone-deaf performance of Stewie belting out a Debbie Gibson classic. What follows is a hysterical deadpan delivery of criticism from the one and only Simon Cowell. Stewie, what the hell was that? The remaining judges offer their two cents as well before Stewie leaves the audition in tears. I don't even care. They don't know what they is talking about. Next time they hear about me, they, they, they's gonna be like, we was wrong about Stewie. At least Stewie has a time machine to go back in time and erase that horrible memory. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.